everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to crochet this super cute candy hearts tote. This is really easy to make with some very simple stitches. And I used some plushy like chenille yarn. So it's cozy, it's soft, it's bright. It's just a really fun tote bag to make and wear, or carry rather. Um, we're gonna start by making the tote bag itself. We're gonna work from the bottom up and create these lovely stripes. I'm gonna show you how to make some really easy handles that really mimic and match the stripes that we're making. And these have nice wide handles too, so they'll be very comfortable to carry. And then finally, we're gonna add some optional hearts. I thought the heart appliques looked really cute. They match the handles up top, and they just are really fun to make too. They're done in just one round, and then we just tacked them right on, okay? So let's get started. Now our finished tote bag is about 14 inches wide and the tote bag itself is about 14 inches tall minus the handles. From the bottom of the tote bag to the top of the handles is about 26 inches tall. And then each one of our little hearts is about two inches wide and two inches tall. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a tape measure is super helpful um, if you are measuring as you go, changing the size, etc. We're gonna be using a 6.5 millimeter K crochet hook. This is my Furls Odyssey um, in the blue. I'll put the link down below if you'd like to get one for yourself. I'm just gonna slide all this over real quick because our beautiful yarn we have here, this is called Honey Bunny by Hobie. This is a lovely plushy chenille yarn. It has a wonderful feel to it. And I have some uh, nice kind of springy bright colors here. And um, we're not gonna use a full ball of yarn uh, for each of these colors. And I'm gonna give you some exact yardage um, in just a minute. But if you wanna replicate um, the colors that I have here, um, I have, this is uh, colorway number 22, lemon curd is what they call it. And then this color here is called Hang on, I'm looking it up. <laughs> this yarn color here is number 33, and that is called Peach. And then this yarn here is color number 45, and that's called Candy Floss. And this brighter pink that I have here is number 47, and they just call it pink. Um, yes, pink. And then this color here, um, this lighter purple, is number 63, and it's called Lilac. So I'm gonna be using all this because we're gonna be making a striped bag and adding some uh, pretty heart appliques to it and things. So I wanted to use lots of different colors. We're not gonna use every last bit of this yarn. You'll have a little bit left. I um, mean, again, I'll give you some measurements in just a sec. If you need to substitute yarn, just look on your yarn label for the little picture of the yarn ball. This is a six super bulky yarn. And then it recommends a seven millimeter crochet hook. If you notice, we're using the 6.5 millimeter. I wanted to go down a little bit just to give it uh, our bag a little bit more sturdiness. So um, look for that super bulky yarn. And this one recommends a seven millimeter hook. So, um, but we're gonna use the 6.5 millimeter K hook, okay? For our stripe sequence, what I'm gonna do is three rounds of each color of these more pastel shades for the main part of the bag. And then when we get to the top part with the handles, I'm gonna do the handles in this bright pink and the heart appliques as well. You can really do any striping sequence you like, but if you wanna replicate what I'm doing, um, just know I'll, I'm gonna save these pastels for the main part of the bag and then use this bright pink for our little heart appliques as well as the handles. One other supply I forgot to mention are stitch markers. To um, place your handles, when we get uh, done crocheting the main part of the tote bag and we want to figure out where our handles are going to go, um, you're going to need a way to mark it somehow. So you can use stitch markers like I have. Just make sure they're removable, these um, open and close kind of like a safety pin. But if you don't have stitch markers, you can use a yarn scrap and just kind of tie it on or you could use a safety pin or something like that, but some kind of way to mark your stitches as we go to place the handles. So let's shift these colors out of the way, and I'm gonna start with the yellow, because that was the first one in my lineup. Now this little bag is super, super easy. We're gonna be doing um, some half double crochets, and we're gonna be working in the round from the bottom of our bag up, later adding the very easy handles, 
And then we're gonna seam the bottom of the bag and add some applique. So super easy. I'm gonna show you how to get started on the bag and then we're gonna learn later um, in our next step how to switch colors when you're ready to do that as well. So our bag, again, is just in the round, half double crochet stitches. And as a side note, we're not doing any fancy stitch sequence. So there's no special stitch count. Uh, we're gonna start with 70 chains, but if you find that the circumference of the bag is not quite what you want, you can totally change up the starting chain if you want a smaller bag or a much larger tote bag. Um, it's totally up to you. There's no special stitch count for this, but we're gonna start with 70 chains. So to begin, grab your first color and you're gonna take the yarn and lay it across your hand. Wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop reach in with your hook, bring up a loop, and tighten. And I'm also going to zoom way, way in so you can see all these stitches that we're gonna be doing. And then what we're gonna do is begin our starting chain. So to make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, now we're gonna do 70. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 66, 67, 68, 69, and 70. So here is our starting chain. And if we take our starting chain and kind of join it end to end, you can see how big the opening of the bag will be. Again, no special stitch count. If you want something a little bit different than what I'm doing here, just make a larger or smaller starting chain. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is join our chain and we're gonna be creating a ring and then we will uh, be working our stitches into that ring. So we're gonna make a big, large ring. So what we wanna do though is be careful not to twist our chain because we will create like a figure eight Mobius shape if we do that. So what I like to do is have the chain facing me, um, the side that was showing while you made the chains, the little Vs. So on the front are Vs, on the back it sort of looks like a chain link fence. So you wanna take and run your thumb down the Vs, down the front there, and if you have a little twist, just stop and kind of twist it back to where it's supposed to go. But you wanna make sure not to twist your chain and just bring it all the way down I'm feeling something twisting here, so I'm gonna just kind of untwist it there. And we're gonna go down to the bottom to that first chain that you worked, okay? So we are all straightened out and we're gonna insert the hook into that first chain worked and then we're gonna work a slip stitch to join them together. So wrap the yarn around your hook, bring it through that chain, you'll have two loops on your hook, and then bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And we now have the very bottom of our bag. Again, we're gonna be seaming the bottom of this later. Okay, so grab your yarn again. This tail we will deal with later. We're not gonna worry about that tail right now. So what we're gonna do next is chain two. One, two. And then we're going to work a double, uh, excuse me, a half double crochet in that first chain. So wrap the yarn around the hook, insert it into that first chain and bring up a loop. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through all three loops on the hook, and that's it. Then we're just gonna work half double crochets in each chain all the way around. Whoops, let me just start over here. So wrap the yarn around the hook, insert it into the chain, bring up a loop, yarn around hook, bring it through all three loops. This is gonna give us a nice kind of dense, uh, not wholly or lacy uh, stitch um, that will really show off this plushy yarn nicely and make for a good tote bag because there won't be big decorative holes for things to fall out of. Obviously you can line the bag later as well if you prefer, but this will give us a little bit of a dense stitch that we can um, use as a tote bag, okay? So I'm just working half double crochets in each of these chains all the way, whoops, all the way around, okay? So continue doing that, and then when we rejoin, I'm gonna show you how to finish up this round, and we're gonna move on to the next round, okay? The next round is gonna be very, very similar to this round, but we're gonna be working in stitches instead of chains. So keep going, working a half double crochet in each chain all the way around with your yarn, and then we'll return in just a minute and we'll finish up round one and begin round two. Okay, just working that last half double crochet of the round, 
And then to close the round for round one, what we're gonna do is join to close with a slip stitch. So remember we did those two chains at the beginning of the round? We're going to insert our hook in that topmost chain, making sure you grab two loops there and then bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. And you can see we have the very beginnings of our little bag, okay? So then what we're gonna do for round two. Now round two is the round you're gonna be repeating for the rest of the main part of the bag until we get to the handles. So what you're gonna do, and again, remember we're doing three rounds of each color, at least I am. You can do however you wanna do your colors, um, but I'm gonna do three rounds. So we're gonna stick with the yellow for now. And for round two, we're gonna chain two once again. So all we're gonna do now is just work a half double crochet into that first stitch and in each stitch all the way around, okay? So just work a half double crochet, half double crochet in every single stitch all the way around. Now if you're using fluffy chenille yarn like me, sometimes it's a little squishy and hard to see. As a uh, benefit though, the yarn is very forgiving and kind of squishes together. But sometimes you might need to kind of to kind of open up the stitch a little bit and kind of pull things apart and see where you're at here, okay? Just because of the, the uh, fluffiness of it all. But you're just gonna work a half double crochet in each one of these stitches, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and work my stitches. And then we'll re when we rejoin, I'm gonna show you how to finish up round two. And we will um, next learn how to switch colors. So keep going with round two and we'll rejoin in just a minute and finish the round up. Okay, just coming up to the end of round two, and once again, we're gonna count two chains up and join with a slip stitch to close. So what we have now are the beginnings of our bag, and we're getting some really pretty texture here, and it kinda looks like little seeds or something with the fluffy yarn and the half double crochets. So what we wanna do now is Continue with round two over and over and over again until your bag has the height that you want it to have. Now, I'm also gonna show you how to move on to the next color, which for us is gonna be the orange. Um, so I'm gonna work one more round, because um, like I said, we're gonna do three rounds and then switch colors just to get our stripe sequence established. So I'm gonna work one more round and then we'll come back and, and rejoin with a new color. But for those of you who know how to do that or just want to kind of move forward or are doing a, maybe a solid color tote bag, you can keep going with round two over and over and over until the bag is the height you want it to be. If you want to see how to switch colors, stick with me for another minute and then we'll move on. Coming up to the end of the round here, I just wanted to show you one more round so that we can switch colors. Now we're going to join with a slip stitch to close the round. And then like I mentioned, if you have a preferred way that you like to join yarn, feel free to do that, of course. Um, I like to cut the yarn, fasten off, wrap the yarn around the hook, pull it through that loop, and then um, sometimes with the chenille you get some little crumbs when you cut it, but that's okay. They'll just kind of fall off and then the strand will be fine. And we're gonna just kind of get that tail out of the way and grab our new color. Okay, so then what we wanna do is go back into that stitch where you left off, insert your hook back into that stitch, grab your new yarn ball or your new color, whatever you're needing to attach, pull it through, and then just tie it right on. Again, if you wanna join it using a different method, feel free to do that. Okay, and then just grab your new yarn, kinda get these tails out of the way, and then we're gonna go into that stitch, bring up a loop, chain two, and we're ready to get going again. So what you wanna do now is just continue with round two over and over and over again, changing colors as needed, and then until your uh, bag is as tall as you would like it to be. So keep going, and we're gonna rejoin in just a bit, and we're gonna learn how to um, work the top part of our bag next. All right, I'm just joining that very last round with a slip stitch. And I just wanted to show you, look at our pretty progress. So we did three rounds of each of the pastel colors, and I can zoom out just a little bit so you can see better. But we did three rounds of each of the pastel colors, and the result is really beautiful. Now, I have, um, we have some ends to weave in later down in the inside of this, but from the bottom edge, 
straight up is about 13 and a half inches. So just so you know, as a side note, if you're kind of after the same dimensions, um, and then we talked about this a little bit at the beginning of the video, but we have about a 14 inch, oh no, actually 13 and a half inch width. So it's um, pretty much square. So if you fold down the corner, a quick way to tell if it's a square is to fold down the corner and see if there's any excess. And it, it's pretty much square, okay? So then what we're gonna do is we need to um, fasten off with our purple because we're gonna add some uh, pink now, uh, the darker pink, we're going to start on the handles, okay? So what I'm going to just do is cut the yarn like we've been doing and just fasten off. Same way we've been doing for all of our stripes. And then we're going to do um, a round of the pink, okay? So I'm just going to remove this. I'm going to so I like to pull from the inside of the ball if possible. So I'm just going to rewrap this outside stuff to keep it out of the way. And then you can kind of like put a finger in at each end and then just kind of dig it out. Okay. It might come out in a clump like this. That's fine. But I like to pull when I, especially when I'm using multiple yarn balls and multiple colors, I like to pull from the center if possible. Sometimes it's a little bit challenging, but we're going to add some bright pink now to the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in, same way we've been doing this before, back into that seam stitch that you last worked, hook the new yarn on, and you know what, let me zoom back in so you can see better. Hook the new yarn on and pull it through. Again, we're going to worry about all these little tails later. Not going to worry about those right now, but just tie the new yarn right on. And we're going to work around the same round we've been doing, row two. We're going to work a same, uh, the same row two, or round two, rather, but just in this pink. We're just going to kind of set up our um, stitches here, okay? So get your little tails out of the way. Go back into that same stitch you worked. Bring up a loop, chain two, and just do the same thing that we've been doing with the half double crochet stitches, okay? So just go right in and work a half double crochet in each stitch with this new handle color yarn, okay? So I'm gonna continue around and we'll rejoin at the end of this round. Okay, coming up to the end of the row, joining with a slip stitch to close the round once again. Okay, so we kind of have our foundation set for our handles. So before we continue, as you can see, I put some stitch markers in here. I put two in the front. This is where our handles will begin, loop up and come back down and then I put two on this side. When you're placing your stitch markers, you wanna make sure that you have the same number in between these top two of stitches and in between the bottom. I have 24 stitches in between, counting the ones um, that have the stitch markers. So we can count together, including the one that has the stitch marker. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24 with the stitch marker in there, okay? And I did the same thing on the bottom as well. So now we're ready to start the handles. We have a nice little foundation of the same color, which will look um, visually uh, make more sense as we continue with the handles. So what we're going to do is do our first handle round, okay? So let's flip this back over to where we left off. We didn't fast off, fasten off or anything, we just have our loop. Now we are going to start working stitches when we get to our first stitch marker. So what we need to do in the meantime, our hook is way back here. So what we need to do is slip stitch over to that first stitch marker, okay? So all you do for that is insert the hook into that first stitch, bring up a loop, bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. And we're just gonna do this all the way across and it will be pretty um, inconspicuous, okay? We just need to get our hook to the right place so we can start working our handle, okay? So just go all the way across with your slip stitches, one in each stitch, and you can see they blend pretty good. No significant height added or anything like that. And it'll blend right in once you're doing your stuff. Okay, so we're coming up to our first stitch marker. I'm 
one more stitch here. Okay, now we're at our first stitch marker. So just pop that off and work a half double crochet into that stitch. And then grab your stitch marker because you'll want to mark it. It'll be those two loops kind of right next to your hook. And we'll just put that right back in with the new stitch. And then keep working a half double crochet in each stitch until you get to this next stitch marker over here, okay? We're kind of working the side of our bag before we start this first handle. Okay, so just work a half double crochet in each stitch, just like that. And we're almost to our stitch marker. Okay, so here we are at our stitch. You can just pop that off for a sec. Work a half double crochet into that stitch. And then let's put this right back on just to mark it. You may or may not need that to still be marked, but it is helpful. Okay, now let's turn our work and we're at the front of the bag. So we're ready to do our handle. You can see we've just departed from this stitch marker. So we're gonna create a chain to make the handle and come back to this stitch marker, okay? All right, so what we wanna do is make a chain for our handle. Now this is where you can kind of customize it. You can make your uh, little hand, like a small handle to like just carry it with your hand or you can make kind of like a shoulder strap. We're gonna make more of the shoulder strap style. So the handle I'm gonna create um, is, uh, again, like I said, like a shoulder handle so you can carry it on your shoulder. So we're gonna do 60 chains. Again, you can shrink that down or increase it. You could do like a crossbody style and make it very big, okay? So we're gonna do 60 chains. So right um, here, work your first chain. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 56, 57, 58, 59, and 60, okay? So just to give you an idea, here is our handle. You can see, and we're gonna join it over here at our other stitch marker, okay? So go down to where you have your stitch marker, and you can pop that off for a minute. Just kind of hold your hand on the stitch if you need to. And we're going to work a slip stitch right into that stitch. So we're insert your hook, bring up a loop, bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. And our handle is now officially attached, okay? So to keep it symmetrical, we worked a half double crochet in this uh, stitch, so we're gonna also work one in that same stitch where we joined um, with a slip stitch, okay? And we're just gonna work a half double crochet right in there. If you need to put your stitch marker in, feel free to do that. Pop that right back on. And now let's turn it. Let's work the side again. So we're gonna go half double crochet into the next stitch, half double crochet into the next stitch, and in every stitch until we get to this other stitch marker, okay? So work half double crochets all the way across. I'm gonna kind of zip along here. There we go. Just work them in every stitch. And then when we get to this stitch marker, we can start on the next handle. All right, coming up to that stitch marker. And remember, whoops, we're gonna work a half double crochet into that stitch too with the stitch marker, okay? So pop it out for a minute. Again, work a half double crochet into that stitch. Put the marker back in if you need it. If you need to see the visual, totally fine. I'm trying to do this while holding my hook. <laughs> a little bit awkward. Okay, and now let's flip this over to the back. Now we're gonna work the other handle. Um, so we worked a half double crochet in that stitch with the marker, and now we're gonna chain 60 once again, because remember we wanna mimic this other handle over here, okay? So chain 60, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifty nine, 10, 59, and 60. Okay, so now we have our second handle and we're gonna just come on down, skipping over all these stitches to where we have our stitch marker from before, okay? Okay, and we're just gonna work in that last stitch with a slip stitch. Now remember, we already worked a half double crochet into that stitch, so we don't need to work another one. It's already there. Okay, so here are our handles. They look great, but they're a little bit flimsy right now. We wanna kinda beef them up a little bit, okay? So what we're gonna do for this round is we're gonna work half double crochets in every stitch and chain around, okay? So what we wanna do is chain two to get started, and then we're gonna work a half double crochet into this first stitch that you see, and we're on the side of our bag, okay? So half double crochet in each of these stitches across, and I'm gonna take you around so we can work the handle together too. Half double crochet in the next stitch. You just think about this as a, a round where you're just working into stitches and chains. They, you won't think about it so much as a handle right now. It's just, you're just working another round. We've just added some chains to make it a little bit bigger, okay? So now we're at our stitch marker again, and these stitch markers are kind of becoming unnecessary, so we can sort of let them go at this point, okay? So we can remove that one. But if you needed to see the visual, you know, by all means. All right, now we're at the last stitch before our chain, okay? So we're starting to get a little nice little, and it, this is also three rows, like our other colors, which I think looks very nice, kind of matches. Okay, so now we're at our handle. So we need to work a half double crochet in each chain of our handle as well, okay? So make sure your chain is facing you, the Vs, the little Vs are facing you, kind of like when we started this project. And you just wanna work a half double crochet in each chain all the way across. Kind of like when we started this project at the bottom. When we started our bottom edge, just work a half double crochet in each chain all the way across, okay? So we've added 60 chains per handle. So you're just gonna put those stitches in and you can see already our, our handle just kind of seamlessly continues and it looks really nice and neat. And we're getting a little bit of, um, uh, strength on our handle as well, okay? Now we're gonna go beyond these three rows here for our handle be a little bit taller, but I do think it looks nice. So if you like the width of this handle, you could stop here, not here, but at, you know, the three rows, but we're gonna make ours a little bit taller. So just continue working half double crochet stitches all the way across in each chain for your handle and it looks really good. It's starting to look really, really nice, like, an, like a bag, like a really nice bag. All right, I'm gonna keep going across, and when we rejoin, uh, we'll be towards the end of this handle, and I'll show you how to continue around and work the sides and the other handle as well, okay? So just keep working a half double crochet in each chain. All right, we've made our way around the handle. It looks great, and we're sort of at the end here. So work your last, half double crochet of your chain when you get to the bottom here. And then we can pop this stitch marker off as well and just work it half double crochet into that first stitch. And now we're on the side of our bag again, okay? So just work a half double crochet in each stitch across. We've departed from the chains and we're back to working in stitches. So right across here, and we're gonna be at a stitch marker once again and a handle, okay? So just work all the way across to your other stitch marker, which I can see is coming up. And I really like how we stuck with the same stitch because it looks, it matches the bag quite well. Okay, so here we are again. We're gonna start on the next handle. So I'm gonna just kinda give the bag a spin once again. 
and let's pop that stitch marker off. We don't need that anymore. And we're going to work it uh, half double crochet into that stitch where the stitch marker was. And then we're going to just do the same thing. We're going to work um, a half double crochet in each chain. And then we're going to work a half double crochet into that first chain that we come to. And a half double crochet. Just make sure your chain is not twisted as you work. We're going to work a half double crochet in each chain across, okay? So go ahead and work your half double crochets in each chain all the way across to really strengthen up that handle. Okay, so I'm going to keep continuing across here working a half double crochet in each one of these chains. You can give it a little tug here and there and just kind of straighten it out. But it looks really nice. Looks, It's coming along really well. And so we're just going to work a half double crochet in each chain across and then we'll rejoin in just a minute and we're going to finish off this uh, round, okay? So keep going with your half double crochets and we'll rejoin in just a minute. Okay, I finished the last, or the second handle rather, and we're just going to join with a slip stitch now to close this round, okay? So this round is super duper easy. All you're going to do for this round is chain two. And in the first stitch, work a half double crochet. And in each stitch, work a half double crochet, okay? So there's no more chains, no more skipping over stitches or anything. We're just working a half double crochet in each stitch, okay? Okay, just coming up to the end of the round, join to close with a slip stitch. Now, let me just zoom in a little bit here. Just coming up to the end of the round and we're going to join to close with a slip stitch to complete the round. Okay, I would like to do one more round of handle. If you are loving this width, feel free to stick with that. I kind of was thinking the width of the handle would be nice as the same width of our stripes. So I'm going to do one more round and that'll give it a little bit more sturdiness and width. Especially, like I mentioned before, if you have something heavy in it, it won't kind of dig into your shoulder. So to start that last round, we're just going to chain two and we're going to work a half double crochet in each stitch all the way around. Same thing we've been doing. It's just going to give us a little bit more uh, width on that stripe or that handle rather. Okay, so just keep going with that. And when we get towards the end of the round, we are going to lastly, we're going to finish up our handles. We are going to do some finish work and that would include uh, weaving in some of these ends that we have here. We need to obviously seam the bottom to make it a functional bag. And we are going to add some, let me flip this over, to our front of our bag. We're going to add some very cute little squishy hearts to kind of, um, and this pink color to kind of tie in the colors together, okay? So keep working this around the last round of your handle. And when we rejoin, we are going to finish up our bag. Our little hearts are made in just one round, so they're very, very quick to add. So let's keep going with this round, and when we rejoin, we're going to finish everything up. Just working that last stitch of the handle, and we're going to join with a slip stitch to close the round, and our handles are complete. And I really love how they're the same width as our stripes. I think that looks really nice together. So what we need to do now is do a little finish work on our tote bag and start making some little heart appliques, okay? So what you can do is just cut the yarn and fasten off. So wrap the yarn around the hook and just pull it all the way through. And then what we're gonna do is we need to weave some ends in. We have some ends here where all the colors that we switched and we also need to sew the bottom because it's not going to be very useful until we do that. So what we want to do is grab our tapestry needle and we're going to sew some things up. Okay, so let's begin by weaving some of these ends in first and then we're going to seam the bottom. So I have a piece here. Now, whenever you have a project with striped colors, when you weave your ends in, you want to stay in the same color area so you won't see um, a different color traveling through your section, okay? 
So you're just going to take your needle and you're going to go in one direction here. With your needle and then we're going to come back in the other direction and give it a snip and then just repeat that for the rest of your tails okay now the chenille yarn sometimes you get a little like fluffy crumbs just just pull them off they'll just come right off okay so let's turn our bag inside out and yellow was the first color that we did, okay? So we want to get this nice and flat uh, with our handles. So get everything nice and flat inside out. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna weave all these in. They kind of look cute, I think. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a matching piece of yarn. So I have some of this yellow here. And we're gonna grab, I would say about 24 inches. So you have a little bit more. Um, you'd wrap. I'd much rather have too much than not enough, okay? But if you run out, you could always cut another piece. It's no big deal. But let's do about two feet of yarn, okay? Give it a snip and grab your needle. Now you notice I have a very large yarn needle here because this yarn is extremely plushy. So we're gonna thread our needle and then we're gonna go down to one section here and we're going to sandwich our pieces together, going in both layers, and we're going to go almost all the way through here so we have a little tail and we're going to tie the yarn tie a nice strong knot I'm going to go three times just for good measure okay and then we're going to work a whip stitch all the way across now the whip stitch is just like a spiral through your work and it's very invisible this yarn like I mentioned before in the video is very forgiving um, and if you use a matching piece of yarn, it won't show at all, okay? So we're just gonna go into both layers with our needle and we're just gonna work a whip stitch, okay? So go just through both layers and pull it through, okay? Through both layers and pull it through. You want your stitches to be a little bit close together because this is the bottom of your bag. So you don't want little things to fall through and you want it to be nice and strong, okay? So just go through both layers all the way across, just like that. And we're just gonna go, whoops, I lost my needle. We're just gonna go all the way across with our yarn. And again, this is inside out, so it's not gonna show when we flip it out. We're just going all the way across. This is a pretty quick stitch too. It's real easy and quick, okay? All right, we're about halfway through. Again, this is pretty invisible and this yarn is very forgiving. It looks nice and neat uh, too when you do your stitches because everything's kind of plushy and hides any imperfections, okay? So we're just going all the way across. Now you can see it's kind of pulling it in. It's sort of flared out a little bit. You can see it's sort of flared out, but it's sort of pulling it in as we stitch. So that'll look nice on the bottom of your bag. Go through both layers. Go through both layers. We're almost there. Just wanna go through both layers here. You might get some crumbs, like I mentioned before. This chenille yarn, uh, you get a little bit of crumbs, but they pull right off very easily. Okay, and we're at the end. Make sure you get that very last little snippet at the end there. And then once you get almost all the way through, leave yourself a little loop, send your yarn needle through, and pull tight to close. Now, go back through. We're gonna make another strong knot. Go back through, almost all the way through till you have a loop and go into that loop with your needle and do that like one or two more times, okay? And then while you have your needle threaded, right then and there, you can kind of stick your hand down in the bag, but you can go in here and just weave it in, right then and there while it's already on the, the needle, okay? So go in one direction, 
and come back in the other direction just like that okay and then you can give it a little snip and our bottom is sewn shut we actually have a functional bag now all right so um also you want to take care of these ends as well and let's turn our bag back out we'll take care of those in just a minute but i wanted to show you how cute this looks let's get everything all you might want to send your hand in here and just kind of get those uh, you know, get the bottom worked out. Okay, so our bag looks wonderful. It's an actual bag now that works and you can put things in it. Okay, so we have our handles, we have our bag. Now at this point, you can really um, just carry your bag. Your bag can be ready to go. We are gonna make some one round hearts. We're gonna make three of them one, two, and we'll make the third one together. But I wanna put a couple little heart appliques on here that matches our handle, okay? So let's make some hearts together. Uh, we're gonna make one together, and then I'm gonna show you um, how to just sew them all on there, okay? So you'll need your hook and whatever color you're using for your applique. We're gonna make some hearts. Okay, so like I said, this is real easy, just done in one round. So what you wanna do is wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop and tighten. We're gonna be making a ring that we're gonna work the stitches into. So what we wanna do next is chain four. One, two, three, four. And then we're gonna to go to the chain farthest from our hook and join with a slip stitch to create our ring. If you prefer the magic ring, feel free to do that instead. I do get that question sometimes. We're gonna hold this tail along the edge as we work. And then what we're gonna do is work a double crochet into the center of the ring. Okay, so to make a double crochet, wrap the yarn around the hook, insert it into the center of the ring, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Then we're gonna work a treble crochet into the center of the ring. So we're gonna wrap the yarn around the hook two times, insert it into the center of the ring and bring up a loop. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the next two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Then once again, we're gonna work a double crochet into the center of the ring. Again, we're still holding that tail along the edges we work. And then we're gonna work a slip stitch. That will create that little divot in our heart that we want. So insert the hook into the center and bring up a loop. Bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And then we're gonna repeat what we just did. Work a double crochet into the center of the ring, a treble crochet into the center of the ring, and then another double crochet into the center of the ring. You may need to reposition the tail that you're holding. Totally fine. Then we're gonna come down the side of our heart and work three single crochets. Insert the hook into the center of the ring, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through both loops. That's one single crochet, two single crochet. I'm gonna get a little bit more yarn. Pushing it over if you need to make some more space. And three, single crochet, okay? That's the side, and then we're gonna make the bottom point. So what we're gonna do, still holding that tail, is work a treble crochet once again to create that little bottom point. Go through the first two loops, next two loops, last two loops, and then to come up the side of the heart again, we'll work three single crochets. So one, Still holding that tail. Let me just fix mine. Uh, two and three, just like that. Now, that first double crochet that we worked, just join with a slip stitch into the side there to close the round, okay? And then we have a little, a little heart, and then we're gonna cut the yarn and Fasten off. 
just like that. And then you'll want to like, kind of just shape it up a little bit, okay? This tail will be helpful. We're gonna use that to sew in our hearts later, okay? Okay, now we need to prep our hearts a little bit. Not not too much here. Let's uh, take the yarn out of our yarn needle over here. Now, those center tails that you held as you went along, give those a nice, strong tug and snip them, okay? You'll have to do that for all of your hearts. Now, I'm doing three. You can do as many as you like. You can cover your uh, tote bag if you want to. You could just do one little one in the corner. It's totally up to you, however many you feel like making. And here's our last one. Whoops, that just snapped right off. Okay, I didn't really intend for that to happen, but it's okay, it worked out. Okay, so what you wanna do is just kind of shape them up. I'm gonna shape mine up. You wanna like kind of get your finger in that little divot and then sharpen it up to a point, okay? And then Put it where you want it to go. Oops, make sure it's facing the right way, unlike mine. There you go. The side that faced you while you worked is the side you want to show on there. So we're gonna do like three little hearts here. You could also do them up here if you wanted to. It's totally up to you or down below. However you wanna do your hearts, okay? Just make sure that they're all facing the right way, okay? Now, we're gonna take one of our tails. Let's grab this one down here. We're gonna take one of our tails. Now, I left some long tails on the first two I made. I, my third one's a little short, but it's okay, it'll work. We're gonna thread the tail, okay? All right, and then we wanna kinda neaten up this edge. So I like to come in a stitch or two, just bring it in a little bit because it'll It'll kind of make that side look a little bit smoother, okay? Now, position where you'd like it to go on your tote bag, and then you might have to kind of put your hand under here to help it out. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of just go in and out, in and out, and kind of tack our heart down, okay? Where we want it to be sewn on, okay? Just takes a couple of well-placed stitches to get this heart on. Now you want to put, it's kind of a balancing act, you want to put enough stitches to where um, it's gonna hold and look nice and neat, but you don't want to overstitch this because it could really flatten out your heart. You want it to have a little bit of dimension, okay? It could look a little bit smushed if you uh, don't really do it, or you over sew it, I should say, okay? So we're just gonna put a couple of well-placed stitches. And I like my stitches, it really helps when you're sewing little tiny things like this. If you kind of make your stitches go in a similar direction of the stitches of the heart, okay? So if you go straight across, you might have like a not so nice looking bar, okay? You can make it look however you want on the inside, but when you do the outside of it, just kind of make them mimic the stitches. Okay, and then we're gonna just come around here. I'm gonna, we're gonna do one of these together. Okay, just like that. And then let's get that bottom. So for the bottom, I do like to take my needle and kind of pull it down. Actually, let me zoom in so you can see that a little bit better. Pull it down a little bit and tack it down that way so I get a nice sharp heart point. And then come around the side. Okay, and then once everything is sewn down, at this point, you can look at your heart and really, if you really want something, like I kind of want this to uh, go in a little bit better. So I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna come up where I want it to kind of adjust it a little bit. And I want this little divot to come down more. So I'm gonna take it, my needle where I want it to go and just kind of smush it down in there and that way it'll like pull it down a little bit. See that? See how it pulled that down a little bit? Also wanna fix this a little bit too. So you might need to adjust a little bit. When you have really squishy yarn, sometimes you need to play with it a little bit, okay? So I'm gonna kinda of tack this bottom down a little bit too, okay? Just pull it down a little, okay? And there is our heart. 
I think it looks great. So what we want to do is go in the inside now and we're just going to try to create like a little loop, kind of like what we did when we sewed the bottom. And we're just going to go around. Don't pull it too tight because you can distort your heart on the other side, okay? But just kind of go a few times and make a little knot. Whoops, my needle fell out. It's okay, we can finish this with our hand. Just like that, okay? We're just uh, putting a nice knot just to really hold it in place. And then we're gonna grab our tail and just right then and there, go ahead and weave that end in, okay? This is the inside of your bag. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. All right, now let's flip it back out. And our heart looks awesome, okay? So just repeat wherever you want the other hearts. I'm gonna go ahead and tack mine on and then we'll rejoin in just a minute. Okay, all of our hearts have been added. They look super cute. Ends are woven in and our tote bag is complete. And it looks absolutely amazing. I'm so happy with the way it turned out and I can't wait to see what all of you come up with with your colors and where you place your hearts as well. So that is how you crochet the Candy Hearts Tote. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again.